Hello, and welcome to another Orca 3D video tutorial. In this video, we'll go into another new feature of Orca 3D version 3, fluid load cases. We'll cover what they are, how to set them up, and how to use them. Fluid load cases are distinct from the load cases from previous versions of Orca, now referred to as fixed load cases. These fixed load cases only allow the user to specify the condition through a combination of fixed weights and centers and float planes. A fluid load case allows you to both add fixed weights and specify tank fill levels as part of your load case definition. You can also change the contents of a tank, set individual compartments permeabilities, and mark compartments as intact or damaged. And you can still use float planes to help define your condition. In order to make a fluid load case, you first must have an Orca design with compartments. We've made a few videos about creating a design and adding compartments, so check them out if you haven't already. First, let's navigate to the Orca Panels Tree tab. We'll open up our design. There, we find a folder titled Load Cases. This is where fluid load cases are stored. Notice how the load cases are part of an individual design, just like its components or its points of interest. For example, a second design will have a completely separate set of fluid load cases. Let's create our first fluid load case. The easiest way to do this is to go to the Orca tree, right click on the load cases folder, and click Create Fluid Load Case. You can also use folders to organize your fluid load cases, with additional organization available in the Fluid Load Case Manager. Alternatively, go to the Orca 3D menu button at the top of the screen. Click Advanced Hydrostatics slash Stability, and here we have the option to create a new fluid load case or manage fluid load cases. First, let's right-click on the Load Cases Root folder. We can create new subfolders to organize our load cases. We'll quickly give our new folder a name. Let's add our first load case under this new subfolder. This will bring up the Fluid Load Case Editor. The Fluid Load Case Editor is split into three main sections. At the top, we'll find our tanks and compartments. Below that are our fixed loads. At the very bottom, we'll find our hydrostatics data. Let's start from the top. In our last video, we covered how to use the compartment properties command to designate a compartment as a tank. By default, the load case editor only shows tanks. To show all compartments, use this checkbox. We'll just focus on tanks to start. The first thing you'll likely do is set your tank fill levels. The load case editor allows you to do this in four different ways. Often, this is done by percentage, but you can also specify fill level by sounding or ullage, which are measured along the sounding tube of the tank. The sounding tube can be changed using the compartment properties command. Lastly, you can specify the volume of fluid that you want to place into the tank. The yellow highlighting indicates which of these methods was used to specify the fill level. And the bold text indicates which values have been changed from the opening of the load case editor. The next column specifies which fluid the tank is filled with. In a new load case, this value is set to each tank's default fluid, which is set in the compartment properties command. To use a different fluid for this load case, Use the drop-down box to pick a fluid from your Orca fluid library. The next column controls the permeability of each compartment. Again, the default value is pulled from compartment properties, but you can manually enter a value to use in this load case. Each tank's fill level, fluid, and permeability, combined with its position within the Orca design, are used to calculate the weight and center of gravity for each tank. Finally, 
The free surface type column controls how free surfaces are modeled when this load case is used in an advanced stability analysis. The next column to the right displays or sets the free surface moment in the upright condition. Let's walk through the options for free surface type. Actual CG shift models the changing position of fluid in the tank as the vessel heals and trims during analysis. The actual shift in the fluid center of gravity is used in computing the vessel's equilibrium condition and the writing arm calculation. Then, the free surface moment is calculated using the actual free surface at equilibrium. This is used to compute the GM correction. This is the most accurate way of modeling fluid loads in ORCA, which is why it's set as the default. The virtual true option uses the free surface moment in the upright condition to compute a virtual rise in the CG. This value is then applied over the full range of stability, remaining unchanged as the vessel heals and trims, and it is used when computing the equilibrium condition, writing arm curve, and the corrected GM. The virtual max option finds the fill level which produces the maximum free surface moment then uses that to calculate a virtual rise in the tank's CG. Like before, this virtual CG shift is calculated once while upright, then applied without regard to heel and trim, and is used in the equilibrium condition, writing arm curve, and corrected GM calculations. Note that this doesn't modify the actual fill level in the tank. This alternate fill level is only used to calculate the free surface correction. An important side note here, when tanks are completely or nearly full or empty, the true and max methods may overstate the actual free surface moment, as shown here. Because of this, the ORCA properties menu has adjustable boundaries expressed in percent fill level. If a tank's fill level falls outside these bounds, the virtual true and virtual max free surface types will return a free surface moment of zero. The virtual custom option allows the user to specify a value for the free surface moment. Using this value, a virtual rise in the CG is calculated in the upright condition, which is then used in the same way as it was in the other virtual options. With this option, the free surface correction for this tank becomes entirely independent of the attitude of the vessel or the geometry or fill level of the tank. At this point, let's look at all compartments, not just tanks. All compartments have a permeability, which we discussed earlier, but they also have a mode, which lets you designate a compartment as intact, damaged, or frozen. When any compartment is set to damaged, it no longer contributes to buoyancy. In addition, if the compartment is a tank, its fluid load will no longer contribute to the vessel's weight, and the fill level is automatically set to zero. Let's now turn our attention to the fixed loads frame. Let's add our first fixed load. Right click anywhere in the fixed load frame and select Add Fixed Load. By default, our new load is enabled, but you can disable it with this checkbox. Let's give it a new name. We can add multiple items as part of this fixed load. In the case of this container ship, there are 696 40-foot containers below deck. Each container weighs 16 metric tons and the total weight of all 696 containers is displayed in the next column over. Finally, add the center of mass for the entire fixed load. In our case, the center of mass of all of the containers below deck. We've successfully added our first fixed load, but this fixed load will only appear in this specific fluid load case. For any new fluid load cases we create, we'll have to re-enter this information. Fortunately, ORCA has a way of making certain fixed loads available to all fluid load cases. 
We'll have to exit the load case editor, so let's give our load case a name and click OK to save our changes. Back in the Orca tree, there's a folder labeled Fixed Load Groups. To add a new fixed load group, right click and press Manage Load Groups. At the top of the Fixed Load Group Manager, click Add New Load Group. Select it and then press the Edit button. This fixed load group will represent the containers on board our ship. To start adding loads, right click anywhere in the list and click Add Fixed Load. This should look familiar. Adding fixed loads to a fixed load group works exactly the same as adding fixed loads to a fluid load case. We can add multiple fixed loads to a fixed load group. And the group's totals will appear in our fluid load cases. Back in the Orca tree, the fixed load groups folder contains our new fixed load group. You'll notice that it's entirely separate from the Orca 3D Designs folder. Once you add a fixed load group to your document, it's available in any load case in any design. When we go back in to edit our load case, by right-clicking on the load case in the tree, we can see that the fixed load group has made its way into our load case, displayed here in Cyan. Fixed load groups are disabled by default, so make sure to enable it if you want to use it in that specific load case. Another very common load to use fixed load groups for is your light ship weight, since it's needed in most load cases and it doesn't change from case to case. Now, let's take a look at the bottom section of the load case editor. Our total weight and center of gravity is displayed here. Below that, we can solve for our vessel's float plane, which by default is given in terms of sinkage, trim, and heel. But you can change that to suit your needs. The float plane solver uses an initial float plane height of half the height of the design, but you can specify a custom value if you'd like. Click the Solve Float Plane button to calculate your values. If you'd like to see this float plane on your model, click the Insert Float Plane button. For a fully detailed upright hydrostatics report, click Create Report. This will also be added to the Reports folder of your design in the Orca tree, along with any other advanced hydrostatics reports you make. Now, let's suppose we had a target total weight and CG in mind, instead of just using the sum of the fluid and fixed loads. With a combination of these two checkboxes, Orca will allow the user to input their weight and CG directly. Orca also calculates the residual load that makes up the difference between these two, and you can add the residual load as a fixed load to your load case. Orca can also let the user specify a float plane, instead of solving a float plane for the weight. Now, Orca will calculate the weight and CG needed to match the specified float plane. Again, you can convert this residual into a fixed load. When you're all done, click OK to save any changes you've made to the load case. Thanks for watching, and check out the Orca 3D channel for more how to videos. Got more questions? Get more answers with the help resources in the description.